Regular ones like that. Have you noticed they don't have a lot of those red crates? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why that's why it's always one red one at the top. I think that red one is more expensive than the black ones, which is racism. Right. It's always racism, man. Just I'm just saying, man. Hey, let me ask you this before we start this shit. Like what do you think would be the best way black people could profit off of racism? The best way that people profit off of racism. Uh, like we see it's not going anywhere. How can we profit off of it? All us get together and buy racism.com. <laughs> and drink them. All us put in 20 bucks. Mm. Go buy racism.com and then uh trick them, trick them racists to coming in and signing up, you know what I'm saying? Get some web traffic. We would have, we would manufacture racism to the people that yeah, we control it though. It's our own version of it, you know what I'm saying? I used to do IT, man. I'm telling you, bro. I knew you were think smart. I think folks going to Google every day and type in racism, just like looking for the most racist. What if we actually controlled that? You know how much, you know how much, you know, the number, I, I would I would imagine it's over a million searches a day for the word racism. Mm. Imagine if we controlled the platform where all that traffic got directed to. Yeah, they should pay us a nickel for every time. You can get all that ad revenue, you can trick people, you can get it. Then when they get there, you know, it just be your black ass just there like, ah, got mm -hmm. you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They can't even do Something shit. you white <laughs> folks be doing. <laughs> you know Change saying? the whole definition Change of it. Change the whole definition of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think we just got to get together, you know, get all our resources together, be like, you know what? We just been about racism. We're going about dot com, dot net, dot biz. Dot org. Dot org. You know what I mean? Start a non-profit. All that shit. Start a for-profit. <laughs> Start a for-profit and a non-profit. For, yeah. Non-profit. Just to, uh, yeah. And they're gonna think they they gonna think they found something. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna be signing up, join the email list. Will they know? <laughs> hey man, welcome back to the black market. <laughs> we just over here strategizing and trying to figure out, you know, how we can take over the world. I was just on the Instagram, butter ATL. Got a special guest in the house with me today, man. Let, let them know who's in the trap with us. Yo, uh, Brandon Butler, uh, executive director, founder of Butter ATL, man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, talk your shit, man. No, Let appreciate them know how it. Started. You know, Atlanta's Culture Channel, man. We uh, we launched back in 2018 in partnership with uh, Dagger, which is an agency out here. And then it kind of just blew up, and it got so big that we actually split it off from Dagger. And I'm being very specific when I say that, because a lot of y'all think that white folks behind me pulling the strings, and it ain't. We got our own thing now. We got our own business. Uh, we got an all-black team, super proud of it, do it right here in Atlanta. Um, we just make dope content about the city. And, uh, you know, we started off as just like an Instagram page, you know, meme account, but I always told folks I ain't, uh, I ain't get my MBA from Georgia Tech to, to do no Instagram page. So, um, but you should. I should have, though. It's money. I mean, I, I, know, I know how to build Instagram. Now, now right? is the time. But now is the time, right? So we took that platform, we leveraged it, um, started getting noticed in the city, kind of became like the new creative low thing, the new Atlanta magazine in a lot of senses. People started coming to us for like news and information, uh, kept, you know, expanding. You know, in the last few months, Ludacris just named his new single, Butter ATL, after us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay. So uh, we did a we did a we did a dope collaboration. Shout out to Luda and DCP. Did uh did the artwork for the single. Um, so that just dropped a few weeks ago. And then um, a couple weeks ago too, we just uh, opened up. Uh, we just partnered with Crystal, the fast food chain. Hey, my man Favo was up here. Yeah. So so funny story about Favo. So I was the one that helped get Favo connected with Crystal. Yeah. Because that's one of my clients. So um you know he I, we were talking. We just knew each other. And I actually was like pitching them on. I said y'all need a new spokesperson. And they was like, who do you think we should get? And I was like, y'all ain't gonna, you ain't gonna believe me, but I said, Fabo. And I got the tech, I got the DMs and text to prove it. I literally hit him up and was like, yo, I got, a, I got this crazy idea with Crystal, you down? And he was like, I'm down. Next thing you know, Fabo was a spokesperson for Crystal. 
That started popping off. Bruh, um, I said that shit like two years ago. Yeah. I have been told him to fuck with Fabo. No, it, it was crazy. So that popped off. Uh, and then we kept on, you know, just building a relationship. And then they basically gave us our own location. So if you go down to 14th and Northside here in Atlanta, we just completely rebranded that, that location right there. That's the one I'll be going to. Yeah, it's the, the, the uh, Crystal by Butter. So we repainted it inside, outside, decked it out. We had a big launch event. Um, we're gonna be doing activations, events and stuff out there. So again, we're making it like a landmark in the city for just, you know, the, the culture and everything dope. And we just gonna be do, uh, doing cool shit out there, man. That's what's up, man. Atlanta, one of the coolest cities out here, man. Like, what's the, what's the process of keeping up with everything that's going on in here? No, you can't, man. I think, you know, there's so much, there's so many dope people, dope, uh, stuff going on in Atlanta, man. You try to kind of keep your finger on the pulse. Right. One of the things I had to do was I had to just surround myself with, like, Younger cats, you know what I'm saying? Folks is in the know, cause you know, I, I, I ain't out there in them streets like I used to be. Yeah. I'm out here trying to, you know, build a business and, and build a brand. So one of the most important things I always say is you gotta surround yourself with people that, you know, I always tell my team, only do what you can do. Right. Right. And so like I made it a point to get, you know, young young cats, you know, guys, girls, people that's in the music, people that's in the finance, and I just surround myself with them. Right. And I, I let them tell me what's popping. And I, you know, I always say, like my dad told me there's a difference between uh, old heads and OGs, right? Like, old heads, they hate on the new stuff. They're like, oh, I wish it was like back in my day, this and that. And I mean, I'm the biggest outcast fan in the world, but I respect what these young cats and these new cats are doing now. So when, you know, these, they come and they tell me what's popping, they tell me about, you know, artists and music who I might not have heard, I don't hate on it. I just say, all right, let's rock with it and see. And like, the audience is gonna tell us what pops, right? So I try to definitely be, you know, more of a, a OG to them than an old head and just be open to just knowing what I don't know and surrounding myself with people that are, um, you know, got their ear to the streets in areas that I might not be in. Right, know? right. Bro, Georgia Tech, and you was, you said you, your background is in IT? Yeah, it's in tech, man. Uh, went to uh, Georgia Southern undergrad, you know what I'm saying, and came back, got my uh, MBA from Georgia Tech. <laughs> Somebody back there went, too. Hey, go Eagles. Hey, go <laughs> Eagles, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and got my uh, MBA at Georgia Tech. I was uh, number one in my class for the uh, MBA program. Uh, Fucking nerd! I am, man. I'm kick your ass, nerd! I wear the same thing every day, man. Like, I, I kind of checked Steve out. Jobs, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs, you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Black t-shirt and jeans every day, man. That's um, the billionaire outfit. Yeah, bro. Like, you know, I can get away with it now, too. Like, I got enough I got enough credibility now where I can let everybody know this is kind of my uniform, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, But, uh, no, tech was cool, man. You know, had a, had a interesting time. Spent a few months in China, um, traveling the world, doing... What you doing over there in China, man? Oh, man, we were doing, you know, lots of, uh, you know, interesting collaboration. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> no, nah, man, we uh, we spent we spent some time in uh, Beijing and Shanghai. It was a uh, part of a uh, international residency. So, I got a, uh, a certificate from the University of Beijing um, in international business. I work out there, uh, and just again, we were like working with like the uh, the Georgia Tech equivalent of a uh, of uh, uh, Georgia Tech out there in China. Um, so that was cool. It was part of the MBA program. Came back. We. Um, you know, part of the part of the program you have is kind of called a capstone project. So you basically spend like a year and a half working on a startup idea. Um, our idea ended up coming in first place. Um, so we had the only all black team. We kicked everybody ass. Uh, we kicked their ass so bad that they uh, they actually they actually tried to change the rules on us. You know what I'm saying? So they were like, whoa, 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 y'all can't be that good and have you know all the black folks on your team. But I love y'all anyway. You know what I'm saying? Uh, did that, raised some money. Had a little startup, and then um, after that got done, kind of rolled this into Butter ATL now, and now I'm running this. Man, that's a dope-ass story. I mean, that's, that's, that's just the last five years, man. I got, you know, some other stuff beyond that. Like what? <laughs> uh, you know, just again, I got, got this uh, history of, you know, tech. So um, if you're out here in Atlanta, there was a big sp a radio station called 790 The Zone for a long time. I was the first head of digital for them, um, head of digital for public broadcast in Atlanta. I ran digital and tech for the biggest PR firm in the world. It's called Edelman out here in Atlanta for like six years. Um, so again, man, just kind of behind the scenes. I even at one point had a chain of uh, web design stores inside malls. That was like my first little, you know, foray into like real entrepreneurship. And I actually won some awards from like Black Enterprise and raised some money off that after I sold that business. So, you know, man, just been uh, out here trying to put in the work, man. Since you're doing it. You know, I, I am doing it, man. I appreciate it. You know, you're you know, we be downplaying stuff. My homeboy, my boy, my boy Bam, get on me about that all the time, man. He's like, you ain't, you ain't trying, you're doing. So, talk it up. I love to see black folks out here doing it. Love to see folks out here making it happen. Because, like we say, I think Atlanta is uh, one of those places where it's still possible. 
It is, man, because it's such a given place, man. The city, it's like, the energy here is like it wants you to thrive, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, and I, I mean, for, for folks who uh, haven't traveled as much, one of the things I always say is, you know, just next time you, you leave Atlanta and when you come back, when you get off the plane at the airport, just look around. You're never gonna see that many black people in all walks of life, you know, from the janitors, the business people, the pilots, all kind of folks in the airport. I mean, when you travel to other places, you don't see nothing like that in this country. When you touch down in Atlanta, from the moment you walk off that plane, you see black faces um, at all doing walks everything. of life, doing everything. And I think that's just what makes it so special out here, you know what I'm saying? It's like a whole nother country. Yeah, bro, it is. It's like its own world. I mean, you really appreciate it when you travel, <laughs> you know, when you go other places, you be like, yo, I feel... Where the black folks <laughs> at? Where the black folks at? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll be, I'll be traveling, I'll be I'll on Google, like, all right, where the black folks go? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to figure out where, where I feel safe at, you know? I mean, how deep are you right now in, in the tech game? I still rock with it, man. I mean, you know, I'm, uh, again, I'm focused on butter stuff, but I still know what's going on. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm big into kind of like crypto and just making sure people are aware of that stuff. You know right. what I'm saying? I just think, again, there What's are... your crypto advice right now? Well, you know, biggest crypto advice, man, is uh, I think every person should own at least, uh, you know, what they call one million Satoshis, which is essentially like a fraction of a Bitcoin. So I think that like every black person should at least own, because at least on like a tenth of a Bitcoin. And the reason why I say that is, is there's a very good chance um, in the future there's not gonna really be a millionaire anymore. Because especially if we get off, if dollars become like not necessarily the, the world standard and people start moving towards crypto, there's a big opportunity I think right now for you to get in. Like again, a couple of years ago, I man, you could have bought Bitcoin for a couple hundred bucks. Now it's at, you know, what is it, 50,000 now, 40, 50,000 now. So there's a lot of folks that, you know, kind of went all in on it. I think if you'd have put like a, a thousand bucks in, you know, 10 years ago, you'd be in the hundreds of millions of dollars now. Um, and there's still, you know, some other cryptos out there besides Bitcoin that have a lot of opportunity. Ethereum is probably the next biggest one. That's essentially programmable money. Um, mm. So anything dealing with money in the financial <clears throat> space, you know, I learned a long time ago, like that's where you want to kind of be paying attention to because them folks don't play about their money, you know? Right. You, you dropping game over here. Hey man, I try to, you know, I try to give you, I just, you know, try to share some of the stuff that I learned over the years, because I had to figure this stuff out myself, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nobody lay it out for me, so I had to kind of piece it together from different places, and I'd be the first one to kind of say, yo, do this, look at this. Right. Um, and I think there's, again, there's just a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of, there's a lot of money in the system right now. Right. You know, like, um, even when, you know, like the, the pandemic and stuff hit last year, and like everything shut down, like, bro, these folks ain't stupid. They knew what they were doing. And I just think, you know, you gotta, you know, like uh, Warren Buffett says, man, like when everybody's being uh, fearful, you gotta be greedy. And so like when these big things kind of happen in the world, you really gotta kind of take a step back and be like, especially you gotta follow the money. Always follow the money. I don't care what nobody says, always follow the money because you know who's in control of the money. Right. And until they start tripping, you just, you just do what they doing and right. you'll be good. Good, good, good. There you have it, folks. <laughs> you don't get no realer than that. So, like, have you always been interested in, like, the internet and shit like that? Yeah, man, um, you know, my dad was a music producer growing up. He, uh, he actually did a bunch of stuff. Uh, he helped produce a bunch of albums for Michael Jackson back in the day. Oh, oh wait, wait a minute, man. And, uh... <laughs> you think you just gonna sit here and say that type of shit and just... Casually. Yeah, Your dad was producing albums for Michael Jackson. Yeah, I remember uh, growing up. He used to, I, so like, we used to, he used to fly back and forth to L.A., and um, I used to go out there with him and stay out there sometimes. And I remember he took me to this dude house named Bruce Swedeen. You can look him up. Bruce was like Mike's like number one producer, this old fat white guy, right? I remember we went to Bruce's house, and I had never seen this. This dude had, you know, how folks have like a piano in their house. This motherfucker had a Bentley in his house. Like, just you walk in the foyer and it was just like a white Bentley right there. And he was like, yeah, Mike gave this to me. And so like, we're walking around like the compound. He's like, yo, let me show you around. So we get in the golf cart and we like riding around this like huge like compound he has, right? And I'll never forget this. He's like, we go to this one part of the, the area, the one part of the area, right? And he's got like three full-sized houses, like not his house. He's got like this humongous mansion, but he's got, you know, three like, you know, two-story houses, right? He's like, yeah, these are the guest houses. He said, let me show you some crazy shit. So we go to one house, we open up the door, and I swear, bro, it was a million cats inside that house. And he was like, my wife loves cats. 
I can't stand them. I told her to put all the cats in here. So think about how rich you gotta be to have a two-story house with nothing but cats in it. Bro, that is the freakiest <laughs> shit I have ever heard. I mean, you open the door, they all stop and look at you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I ain't going in there. So you telling me the dude who produced music for Michael Jackson got a house full of cats? Yeah, he, he had a house full of cats, man, next to his other three houses on his and property. you saw him? I saw him. A whole ass house. A whole house full of cats. And this was in... You know, probably like the mid-90s, you know what I'm saying? He probably got two houses full of cats now. <laughs> Damn. Maybe three. Damn. So that's what I'm saying, man. When you, when you get exposure to stuff like that at an early age and you start seeing how other people are living and, like, how crazy this game is, it just, uh, that's the one thing I always appreciate. Like, my dad, you know, I mean, he didn't, he didn't stay in the business. You know, he got out and started doing some other stuff, but, like, it, it gave me exposure because... Even with him, I remember he was the first person who gave me a computer. I remember he came home, probably one of Michael Jackson checks, and I remember he brought a computer home. Mm -hmm. And I remember clear as day, he was like, fuck with this. He just was like, he was like, don't do what I'm doing. He was like, fuck with this. And so I just started taking the computer apart, messing with it, figuring out how it worked, rebuilding it, you know, then started like working on computers and all that kind of stuff. And I, you know, even when I was in college, you know, when everybody else is like, you know, working little side jobs at restaurants and stuff, I was able to be out, you know, building websites and getting paid, you know, 30, 40 bucks an hour as a 19 year old, you know what I mean? And this is again, back in the early 2000s, you know, and, and like I said, for folks that know Georgia Southern, know Statesboro, you know, that's like making a million dollars a year, you know what I'm saying? So um, I've always, you know, been attached to it. It's always been a part of me. And I think that's even what makes butter uh, so successful now is, you know, I know how these guys that build this technology think. Right. So we even try to, like, engineer some of our content so that it, it really works with the system and the algorithm so we kind of get the most out of it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, shit, man. Anything we can do over here at the 85 South Show, Black Market, to help push y'all to the next level, because what you're doing over there is dope, man. Yeah, man, we're just trying to spread the word, man. I think, you know, again, like, um, a lot of folks think, uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of crazy content and stuff online right now, especially in the social space. And I think a lot of folks think that because we don't get into that stuff, like we ain't black or black enough. And I always tell folks I don't associate. I mean, bro, you 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 <laughs> you a IT black dude, man. <laughs> what you supposed to do? Yeah, I just say like we don't have to associate, you know, crime and all that stuff with blackness, right? Yeah. I think we're trying to kind of show the other side of Atlanta, you yeah. know, the, the the other side of being black, not just like the crazy shit you see all the time, right? right? So I just want people to know there's, you know, more options for content out here. You know, I always say there's three kinds of content, right? There's right. vitamin, candy, and painkillers. Yeah. And you know, I think um, there's a lot of candy content out there right now. And like candy tastes good, but if all you eat is candy, it's gonna rot your teeth. If yeah, all you right. watch is Fox News, you're gonna be thinking about crazy stuff, right? So you can't just live off of candy. You know, on the flip side, you know, there's a lot of vitamin content, right? There's a lot of like motivational go hustle content, but here's the thing, if you don't actually do the work, it don't matter how many vitamins, you can take vitamins all day long, but if you don't go to the gym, ain't shit gonna happen, right? Right. And then there's painkillers, there's content that solves problems. And so right. like, we try to have a balance of all those things. And I think there's a lot of folks out here that get a little bit too caught up in one or the other. Um, and I just want people to know there's other alternatives, there's other platforms, other voices, and we're also just trying to, again, put Atlanta in a certain kind of light because when people see all that crime, they think that's what the city's about. Right. And they come here, they, they think that everybody down here is going to get shot at Lenox. They, nah. think, they think something crazy is going to happen. And we're just trying to show folks, like, Atlanta has never just been that, and it's way more than that. You know what I'm saying? Those are just, like, certain voices that are just the loudest in the room. But we're trying to, you know, kind of round it out a little bit. Well, there you have it, folks. Over here at the Black Market. My man, Brandon. Hey man, you know, appreciate y'all, man. You know, what, 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 what can butter do for y'all, man? How can how can I help you? What, what you got? What you need? How can I help you? I don't know, man. We'll figure it out, though. We out this bitch, black market. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs>